so it's a bit more windy and colder than I expected today but here we go it's the weekend and I'm determined to get this done because I've got other stuff lined up for the following weekends so I've got everything that I need backed up here and I hope that I'll be able to get at least one of the brick drum replace before having to go back into my house to replenish stuff but we'll see how it goes so i'm just getting ready to choke the wheels and loosen the lock so i've choked three of the four wheels now and the reason for doing this is when we jack the rear wheel up the front wheels are just going to be freewheeling and i'm parking on a slight incline because this is my only option so the road kind of goes down that way as well as that way um, and I'm quite worried that the car might roll forward but we'll just see how it goes okay the rear right wheel is now off the ground and the car isn't rolling forward which is a good start right so this is slightly disconcerting this lug nut was very tight coming off and I can see some metal filings there so what I've done is, I've used an air duster to blow out all the metal filings from the lug nut and I'm going to use a wire brush later to clean the bolt and hopefully that will solve the issue. Alright, I've got the wheel off, but a bit of bad news. This bolt here seems to be uh, faulty, or rather it's a bit condemned because I can't get the lug nut to thread all the way back in. So what I've done as a last resort is to apply some anti seize grease and I'm hoping that with, with that I'll be able to sort of get the uh, bolt uh, sorry the lug nut to tread back on properly later but we'll cross that bridge when we get there I've just re removed the caliper uh, bolts that hold the caliper to the bracket and I'm going to remove the caliper now and I'm just looking for somewhere to uh, support its weight on so I've got the cable ties here and I'm probably going to tie it to that suspension spring okay, the story so far is I've removed the caliper and I've cleaned the caliper as best as I can using a wire brush and a brake pipe cleaner so I've cleaned under the rubber boots and I've sort of brushed uh, this side of the sliding uh, caliper's face as well so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compress the caliper back in but before I do that I'm going to loosen the uh, brake fluid reservoir in the uh, engine compartment Alright, I've just removed both brake pads that had to be pried out of place using a screwdriver because they were quite uh, seized to the brake hardware and as far as I can see there are no lubrications or anti-squeal uh, material between the hardware and the pads so that's bad but we'll get that sorted once we install the new one so i haven't compressed the caliper back in yet because i just realized i need the brake pad to do that to use as a protect protection um, against the caliper piston spreader and the caliper's face so i'm going to do that right now All right so i've just managed to loosen the caliper carrier bolts Oh, by the way, the, the piston has been compressed back in. As we can see, it's quite far in now. Now, getting the caliper carrier bolts loose was a major pain. So, uh, it turns out these are 14 millimeter bolts instead of 17. So, thankfully, I've got I've got these two uh, 14 millimeter wrench uh, wrenches, and um, I went on hammering them with this rubber mallet, but they would not budge. I tried so many things um, to the point where. Um, I was progressively trying uh, more and more desperate situ uh, solutions and eventually ended up using my uh, half inch drive torque wrench with uh, an adapter to 38 inch and this 14 millimeter socket and um, the reason for this is the length it gives me a bit of leverage and uh, I pulled like mad Ooh. Um, the wrench was you know, barely had enough clearance up this end but thankfully, thank god managed to get the leverage to break this loose that was uh, almost a showstopper but I'm glad it's okay, done so I've got the caliper carrier off and by the way, these are the guide pins that need to be serviced and re-greased before reinstalling and um, the brake hardware need to be replaced as well so 
um, as expected the disc is seized in place so I'm gonna try a couple of things you know, the parking brake is definitely released so I'm gonna try wetting the rubber mallet and if that doesn't work then I'm gonna thread in the M8 bolts to pull the disc up okay so whacking this with the rubber mallet didn't loosen it at all so I had to use this M8 bolts to thread in and push this out so as we can see the disc is already part partially out of the uh, uh, hub so um, I'm gonna continue going so to do that I've had to go indoors to get this 13 mil by a uh, quarter inch socket and adapt that to uh, 3 8 inch before adapting it to half inch yeah that's because I'm lazy to use my shorter 3 8 inch torque wrench but uh, glad that this is now loose and we can pull it off okay so we've removed the old disc drum and they're actually made by Subaru which surprises me because this is an NBK brake system and I wasn't aware Subaru makes this uh, sorry brake this anyway uh, so here we are so I'm going to use the brake cleaner to clean off the surface of the shoes and um, I am also going to use the wire brush to clean off the corrosion from that from the face here because without doing so the um, uh, the contact points between the hub face and the new disc is, isn't going to be uniform and that's that can cause a uh, disc warp when the disc get, gets hot now we can see the impression made by the m8 bolts that we use to pull the disc off okay cool so um maybe before doing that uh, i'm going to spin that wheel there to adjust the, the, the shoes uh, just to make sure the new uh, disc drum will slip into place properly Okay, let's yeah, get this started. little black rubber grommet needs to be removed from the old disc uh, drum and installed a new one. That prevents dust getting in to damage to cause damage to this uh, drum brake system. While the okay, car's so it's all clean now. So I think before taking the new stuff out, I think I'm going to grease the um, caliper guide pins first because I like doing all the dirty stuff first you know and that way it makes installing a lot more pleasant so i'm gonna get that done okay so we've just replaced the brake hardware with the new ones from brembo and they seem to fit into place pretty well unlike the problem that i had with the front so hopefully they'll work just fine uh just in case i need to switch back to the old ones i've got them here anyway but i hope i won't have to do that so now it's time to install the new disc drum. Note that the disc drum needs to be installed and the parking brake correctly set before we bolt this caliper uh, carrier back on. And the reason for that is this hole needs to be plugged from the inside. So we need to adjust the, uh, the brake shoes to the correct point and then we need to pull this back off install this rubber plug, push it back on before we can bolt this brake caliper carrier back on. Okay, now that the drum brake shoes are correctly adjusted and I just want to say I made a mistake with this uh, the rubber grommet. It actually plugs in from the outside rather than from the back. So I could have installed the caliper uh, carrier before doing this, but here we are learning from mistakes. Right, so I've just installed the upper caliper carrier bolt and I did apply the uh, lock tight thread lock um, just I just want to say this is actually the weaker type I think this one yeah this is the the weaker version but as you saw earlier it, it there wasn't any applied in, in the first place so that's all I've got and it's better than nothing um, I'm going to talk the bolts up to 49 foot, foot pound of torque with my torque wrench once i'm done installing the bottom one and i've got to be quick to do this before the thread locker hardens up in okay inside. so once again this is my cheap amazon basics torque wrench and it feels really horrible to use you know the uh the torque setting ring just binds in place and it's so rough turning it 
so I've turned it to about 50 foot pounds anyway. Um, the advantage of this is it's shorter, so it's easier to get the job done with less clearance. And also, this is already a uh, 38 inch, which means I only need to go through one adapter to get it down to 14 millimeters. Okay, so I've got the caliper carrier installed and torqued up to the correct torque. So I've just pushed the new uh, Brembo pads in place just to see where it contacts with the brake hardware so now we can see exactly where we need to apply the anti squeal paste which I've got right here and I'm going to be using this pin brush to do so so we just need to get it around this bit here around the ears as well as that bit there where the spring uh, from the brake hardware contacts to pad so basically what I would do is I would avoid getting it on the top and I'll just do this bit around to, to about there and that should do it oh yes the one other thing i need to mention is the brake pad from the the, the back part of this caliper came with um what do you call it the acoustic wear indicator so i'm going to i'm going to use the brembo pad that has the acoustic wear indicator for for the back of this now i explained my previous video that the original uh brake pads come with two acoustic wear indicator so uh, one for this side and one for the other side but the Brembo one comes with just one so um, well, there you go so I think uh, the, the the idea is they should all wear at pretty much the same rate um, uh, yeah so all the more it, I mean it's all the more important to grease up the uh, caliper slide pins properly when doing this job because you don't want uneven wear on the brake pads because the worst situation you can end up with is you end up with a really thick pad with the acoustic wear indicator while the others have gone down to the uh the backing and it damages the the, the new rotors um okay so let's, let's get show you very quickly these are the old ones and that's the acoustic wear indicator on the old one and this is the new one here and also just want to say this uh p7018 came pre-installed with the uh, shims already in place um where else with the front uh, i had to actually install them myself so okay so this is what i've ended up with but i forgot to say that we also need to apply the uh anti uh, sorry anti squeal paste on the front parts where the uh caliper uh, mechanism is going to contact the pad so basically any where the pad touches another piece of metal needs to be coated with this uh, substance okay now the right rear side is almost done all that needs to be done now is to torque up the caliper guide pins to 19 foot pounds of torque and we can install the wheel back on after that um, and that should be it and that's it so thankfully I was able to torque up all the lug nuts back up to the uh, spec of 89 foot pounds of torque so that really is a, it's a huge relief due to the issue with the uh, those two uh, lug nuts earlier not being able to thread back into place so here we can see the brembo marking on the top of the the drum part of the disc and we can also see the brembo uh, logo on the uh, on the pad so what we'll do next is do the same on the other side on the left side and I wouldn't be making a video because it's pretty much the same and I need to get it done really quick because it's really late today. Um, I started at around 1 o'clock and it's already about 5 or 6 in the evening. So I need to get it done before the sun goes down. Okay, thanks okay, for now watching. For the final bit, I need to pump the brakes to get the uh, caliper piston to extend back out and push against the pads. So, if we start by pressing on the brake pedal, it should go all the way to the floor, which it does. So, we've got to keep doing this. Now, it's stuck around there with very little trouble, but that's because the brake booster vacuum reservoir has been depleted. So, we need to recharge the vacuum by starting the engine. And now, the brake pedal should go down further towards the floor once again okay it's kind of firm 
in the correct place. So I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the aircon for a few minutes before working on the other wheel. So uh, thanks for watching.